Hello and welcome to our gluten-free cooking class. Um, we're excited if you're here live, then you can feel free to ask questions as we go along. But if you're watching this recording after the fact, then reach out to myself or if you have a different consultant at Bon Cook, reach out to them and I'm sure we can answer any questions. I'm really excited. I taught this class in person a few weeks ago. Um, in person is always better because you can taste the food, but um, it's at, these recipes are so amazing. And I had so many people here that either choose to eat gluten-free or they have celiac or they have someone in their family who's celiac. And so they were so excited, not only about the recipes we made, but the tips that we shared along the way. So um, let's get started. I hope that uh, you guys enjoy. And there's anyone out there that wants to share some ideas, feel free to do that as well. So the first recipe is a gluten-free pizza dough. And this, you guys, is amazing. You can do any type of uh, pizza toppings you want with this recipe, okay? So the first thing first is you're starting with three-fourths of a cup warm water. And you want to make sure that that water is between 110 and 120 degrees. And our instant read digital thermometer is perfect for that. So we, it was a little higher. Now it's down to exactly 100. So we want to get going on this. So we're going to add to this water, I haven't, I don't make this enough, so I'm watching my recipe too. One tablespoon of sugar, and then one packet of instant yeast or active rise yeast. And so you're just going to open that up, and then we're gonna put this in here. And then this is just gonna be until, you're gonna say, the mixture blooms. Um, can you admit can people come in? Thank you. Um, and so a lot of people are like, what does that mean, you guys? All that it means is going to start to look a little foamy. So I'm only stirring it enough to get that sugar combined with the yeast. And um, it doesn't have to dissolve or anything. You just want to make sure that yeast is fully in the sugar water, okay? So we've got that going, and then it's going to foam up. Do you see where to do that? No, I don't see anybody. Oh, I just saw a pop up on her. That's so weird. Where, where do I see her? I don't know. She must have gone away. She wasn't there. Oh, okay. so far. I'll say. I wonder if you can. Yeah, you should be able to do it on Usually there. Usually it says it up here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so this is just going to sit and bloom. And so while that's doing that, uh, we're going to go ahead. There's just two people. Did you get those guys entered? Or do I need to do it from my iPad, maybe? It's weird. See how it says? Two people entered the waiting room. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I don't know why it's not doing it on the hit view. See under how it says view it's underneath there. Here, I'll just do it. I see view. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And okay. then and yeah. I don't know why it's not working up top. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Because it's not showing. Oh, Sorry for the interruption, guys. Mm -hmm. My technology is not working tonight for some reason. So, um, okay, we should be good. So, welcome. I cannot see on the little eyes who is joined, other than I can see my friend Nina. So, welcome. And um, I'm super excited. Um, we're having some technical difficulties with the second device, so I apologize. I don't know what's going on. But we are um, in the process of making our gluten-free pizza dough. And the only thing that we did um, for start is we did, we're blooming our yeast, which is simply, we did three-fourths of a cup warm water. Um, I measured or took the temp of water uh, with my digital thermometer. Love, because you can use that in meat, and you can also use it liquid and then one packet of yeast, and then one tablespoon of sugar. So that's blooming. And now I'm gonna add the dry ingredients for my pizza dough. So um, I wonder if I have to make a, a host on this. Yeah, you yeah. can make yourself a co-host. That's, why. Um, that's, that's really thing. weird. Yeah. Sorry guys, hang tight because I've got helpers here who can't help me <laughs> if I don't have things dialed in. And I don't know why this is working this way. Mm -hmm because make co host there we go. You'd think if I'm logged into my account that it would allow me to be a co-host. Co okay, so I'm back with you now. Okay, so then to make this um, dough, we're gonna go ahead and start. Now, I wanna share with you guys um, different flours. I'm gonna show you lots of different flours. Um, there's actually four different types of gluten-free flour that I use for different reasons. One is put away, but Namaste is a really good gluten-free flour. If you're gonna do pizza dough, um, just uh, muffins, those types of things, it's great. My absolute favorite for baking is this cup per cup. It's a little spendy. I did just have a friend give me a recipe for this. So if you're both baking gluten-free, then I can definitely um, get that recipe to you. 
that is, it mimics this cup for cup. Um, as little as I bake gluten-free, I buy it like this. I love it. Um, we have a lot of stores here around town that can use it. I also use Bob's Red Mill. That's a local gluten-free flour for us that I use for this pizza dough. So I have, I'm gonna use what I have left is this and this for pizza dough. And then this I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, there's a specific reason for that one as well. So we're gonna do two cups of gluten-free flour. Now, gluten-free flour is the same as all-purpose flour that's full of gluten. You never wanna just scoop it up with your measuring cup. You wanna spin it into the measuring cup so that you have the right amount, okay? And so, Oh, Tina, I was just thinking about those crepes. Probably what was missed is not sifting the flour. Oh, I did. So that's all right. So I will do that when I do it for everyone else and we'll learn the lesson. So, um, okay, so the other thing I like to do is you can also pour it in. I gotta move this thing. If you're so confident that you're not gonna overdo it, <laughs> um, which watch I will as I'm doing this, but I'm just lightly spooning, sprinkling in this to here. And then we're gonna move. This one is gonna move it back. So I don't know about you guys, the gluten-free flour is like, depending on the recipe, sometimes you can tell it's gluten-free, sometimes you can't. I will say Bob's bread mill with like a pizza dough, I can't tell. Um, with a baked good, I can tell a little bit. That's why I like the cup for cup best, but it's still an excellent cup for cup blend. But you can see this is one-to-one -one baking flour and this is called cup for cup. So a lot of times people say when I'm saying cup for cup, it's like it measured equally, which it does, but the brand is what I'm talking about. So we've got one cup so far, and then I'm going to do the second cup of the gluten-free flour in here. And I can see our yeast is blooming, so you guys will see how easy that is. I think it's really intimidating for people when you have a recipe with yeast, and you know, you're blooming the yeast, and it really is simple, you guys. It's not hard at all, but you just got to practice to know how to do it. And I've got some quick, easy tricks for those of you who just don't want to bake gluten-free from scratch either. Okay, so there's my second cup. Now this is the bar I'm really excited about. So I was making this <laughs> a while back and I was like, oh, this is good dough, but it doesn't have much flavor to it. Of course you can get the flavor from the toppings, but I gotta tell you, um, I experimented and successfully discovered that our French pantry herb blends are an awesome complement to this pizza dough. So tonight I'm using our roasted garlic and chive. I always shake up our herb blends because they have your pieces fall to the bottom. You wanna make sure they're nice and blended. I'm gonna go ahead and pour some of the lid here so you can see these, how amazing these are. These are more like a loose tea than that ground up powder. They taste so fresh when you put them in a recipe, okay? So now this recipe um, calls for two tablespoons and the lid is about one tablespoon. So if you don't want to measure, you can just use your lid if you fill that in. And I know it seems like a lot, but it's not. It's so amazing. Um, it flavors the dough perfectly, okay? So then the other thing we're going to use is one teaspoon of our celery salt, which I'm going to eyeball that too. Why not? Put it in. So a little bit more. And then, so you're always going to put this dry ingredient in first. And so those are my dry. And I'm just going to lightly blend it together. And then I'm going to add, and this is, you can use a hand mixer or a sand mixer. I just have that sand mixer. And maybe you saw, maybe you didn't have my paddle attachment, so not the dough hook like you would um, with some other pizza, but the flat paddle attachment that I'm putting on there, okay? So then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to add our egg, oil, vinegar, and yeast mixture. So I've got one egg. I love our pinch bowls for this purpose of cracking eggs because you always wanna make sure you don't get a shell in there and they're the perfect size for cracking one egg so i'm going to go ahead and put that one egg in there and then i'm going to use we've got the recipe calls for one tablespoon oil of choice so you can use the sweet basil oil if you happen to have any of our garlic oil out of stock right now if you have any in the end you could use that the tuscan herb oil is really good too or you can use our edoo all really good options i'm going to use the basil oil tonight so I'm just gonna do one tablespoon of our basil oil. Mmm, smells so good, you guys. Dana, that is the gluten-free bread in the bottom, top, top, bottom, bottom, bottom. Um, so it maybe needs like, I don't know, five to 10 more minutes? Okay, thank you. And then one teaspoon of apple cider vinegar. Um, you can also use our traditional white vinegar, if you have that on hand. 
Um, so either one. Most people have apple cider vinegar to stick around. So I put that on there, um, but you can use the traditional white as well. You just want the vinegar in there. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna mix that on low until the dough comes together. Okay, so now I'm gonna set this aside to get ready to show you this amazing dough. And let me you know if you have any questions. Oh gosh, thank you. Good call. Yeah. I did. I might would look at it and be like, what's missing? Yeah. The yeast and water mixture. <laughs> this is what happens when you're it was really nice packing. and foamed up. I know. I didn't show it to you guys, but you yeah. saw the foaming, yeah. which is really important. And that's when the rest of this blooming, that's all it does. So it, you guys saw how simple that was. Thank you, Tina. I was like, why is that not yeah. getting the voice to that? There we go. It's all right, just in time. That's when now it's supposed to go. Perfect. Now it'll come together. Okay. So this dough too, I want, you gotta want to eyeball it, okay? Because I can tell right now that I'm gonna add a little bit more flour. It's not gonna come together. It's gluten free, but I can, I wanna show this to you because this is when you kinda gotta see somewhere along the way, eggs are all different sizes, the measurements are not perfect unless you weigh them, which you didn't. So I'm just gonna sprinkle a tiny bit more. I'm gonna actually spoon it, I took that spoon away. You kept it there for a reason. So I'm gonna spin a little bit more in here just so you guys can see that. And then again, it smells so good, you guys. I wish you could smell it. It's so good. Okay, so then I've got my bond mat and baking sheet ready to go for my pizza. This dough though, we pre-bake it. So we're gonna bake it um for about eight to ten minutes before I top it and then top it. And then just so you guys know, I've got my oven preheated to 450 degrees, okay? So, okay, so now this still, like I said, doesn't come together like a ball, but it's still gonna come out of here nicely. You're gonna see what I'm talking about. So now, it's a little sticky. So, gluten-free doughs can be a little bit sticky. I'm gonna show you this right here. So there's my gluten-free dough. Now you got a couple options, you guys. Right now, if I roll this out, it's not going to come off the back of roll pack very easily. So I can, you can do two things. Oh, sorry. I see hands. Okay. So a couple things. I put it on here because you can, if you've got a dough that will roll, use it on your roll pack. This, I'm going to tell you right now, is going to be better to go straight on my bomb mat. But I'm going to show you what I'm doing with my roll pack. It's kind of cool. So you can see it's kind of sticky. But we're going to do this. But I'm going to make time. That back on my baking sheet in a minute. I'm gonna put my roll pad on top. Two reasons. One, because it's the only way I'm gonna be able to roll without it sticking to my rolling pin. And my rolling pin has been rolled with regular flowers on it. And if you've got somebody that's severely allergic to um, gluten, you and you're baking for them, this is great. You can do gluten free stuff, but you guys, you better watch out for that cross contamination. And I've got a kid with severe nut allergies. And the last thing you want to do is make someone sick because of cross contamination. So I use barium to roll pat between. Now, this is when we're going to find out if the dough is going to come off or not. And if it doesn't, we're just going to stick it in the fridge for it to cool and then it will release. Indeed. But see, now my rolling pin's clean. And now we're going to hope this comes off smoothly. Yep. A little, little jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. But like you're going to see anytime you do a pie dough, pizza dough, you name it, if it starts to stick a little bit, Throw it in the fridge for a couple of minutes. It's only because that dough is warm that it's doing that, okay? So, but how cool is that trick that you can do that and now you've got that safe, your rolling pin that's cross camera and didn't touch that. So now, I wish that you could smell this dough, but look how yummy that looks. Just imagine how it smells. So I'm gonna stick this in the oven for eight minutes and then I'm gonna check the thing. Okay, perfect. So there's my pizza dough. And then uh, when that comes out, we're gonna top it. We're gonna be really simple tonight um, because I really want the people that are coming to my house later to eat this to taste the flavor of the dough and the top and all that I'm gonna put on top. So this is what I do for simple, um, simple topping that is elevated for sure. It's amazing. And I thought I had a bowl out, but it must have gotten somewhere. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some of this top and on in with a little bit of my EVOO. And we're gonna brush it. it comes out. Okay, so super simple. 
this tapenade, those of you who have not had the joy of um, tasting our tapenades, um, let me tell you what's in here. Rehydrated dried tomatoes, tomato puree, sunflower oil, capers, extra virgin olive oil, basil, and garlic. Simple as that. Super fresh ingredients. I will tell you that you want to use this jar so when you open it, you refrigerate it after, and then you want to make sure that you use it within a week, okay? Because it's so fresh, it will go bad quickly. So then this is our EVOO, extra virgin olive oil from France. This is amazing, you guys. It's so good. I put this little stopper on it to pour slowly, but this is a case I kind of want to pour more quickly. So what I'm doing is about two thirds, one third. So two thirds tapenade, one third of the EVOO. Thank you, Zaina. Does that look good? Yeah, it, you know, so this is good. Let me show people because this is my gluten-free bread. It's on my website. You actually can do it. Um, this is how it came out. We're gonna let it sit for 10 minutes, pour out mold. That's the magic with four teas. Cool for 10 minutes, then pop it out. So I can touch and see where it's at. And these loaves are a little bit small, so they're okay. But you can also test the inside um, with a toothpick. And so let me grab a toothpick because we want it to be done with these tall ones here. And then and I'm just a little uncertain. So I'm gonna stick this in the center and just make sure when you do a toothpick test, here's another tip for you. Wait for five seconds and then pull it out. So many people go in and out quickly. We're clean, we're good. So I will unmold these for you in about 10 minutes. Let's put them back here. So we don't forget. Okay, perfect. Okay, so back to the top one. <laughs> um, okay. I've got all my little set of mini spatulas, you guys. And I love this for stirring and it'll be good for spreading too. Um, but so back to the EVOO. This olive oil, you guys, is so smooth. You absolutely could drink it out of this bottle. Now, I um, have somebody in the room who has some Italian in her blood, but I'm gonna say that the, uh, Olive oil from Italy is amazing. But when I tasted French EVOO, I was more impressed because it's I totally there. agree. It doesn't <laughs> have that bite to it. Um, that and so it's there's great EVOO from um Italy too, but French olive oil, if you've never tried it, so smooth, you guys, you can drink it. It doesn't have that bite. It's very, very smooth. I had people tasting this at an event I did last week at our winery and it at a winery, not my winery, just mm -hmm. so enough, at a winery. And uh, they were saying it tastes very neat. And I was like, oh, that's a good way to say it. But like, it does, it's very neat, very clean. Okay, so we're gonna do that uh, pizza. We'll top that when it comes out here in just a minute. So the next thing I wanna do, because I wanna get it in the oven to show you, is my crepe batter. So we're gonna do oven baked crepes. I know that sounds crazy. And yes, those are gluten free as well. I am gonna show you how to make them. Uh, from start to finish, so do not worry. But um, the batter has to sit for like 20 minutes. And so I'm just going to, are we almost 20 minutes? Correct. Okay, so, so we've got the batter ready. And then the oven, all these recipes are on our website, guys, so don't worry. I don't have them in front of me though. Where's that? Oh, here it is. So you're dancing around the kitchen. That's what I'm checking. I think it's 450, yes. Yeah. Is it, um, is it, is it, well, is it top at 450? Yeah. Okay, perfect, 450. So, so these are gonna be at 450. These are amazing, you guys. So I wanna get these in because I want you to be able to see the finished product of these two. So these are gonna go in our Fortis rectangular mold. I love this, guys. Um, you can see it's floppy. It gains stability as soon as you put it on perforated baking sheet, um, and then it's stable. This, you can do your sheet pan dinners in here. You can do uh, your roasted meats, you can do vegetables, you can do casseroles, you name it. Anything that goes in that glass 9 by 13 can go in here, but the best part about our pan, you don't have to spray it, grease it, oil it, prep it in any way, it's ready to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to put crepe batter in here. Now, the recipe, you know, so, I forgot that it makes more than one, but that's right, because we got people that will eat these, mainly my boys. <laughs> so um, it's going to take about one uh, cup of batter. So I'm gonna go ahead, Tina was so nice to put this together. So again, I'll tell you how to do it, but I'm just gonna whisk it up. Now, I did not pull out my sifter for her, so we didn't get this sifted, but I will sift it the next time. But we'll see if it makes a difference or not. Oh my gosh, the pizza smells so good today. Yes. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this crepe batter in the rectangular mold. 
a little bit thick. So what we want to do is roll it around. It is thicker than it was last time I made it. So it could be that it just needs to be sifted. So you learn from our mistakes. That's as simple as that, you guys. So, because normally it's thinner than this. So I'm going to go ahead and, but this is a cool thing to do this is you can jiggle it around until it covers the bottom of the mold. I mean, how many of you actually realize you could make crates gluten free and that they would be made in the oven? So I like to tap on my pan to level things out, okay? So that is gonna go in the oven at 450 degrees. It's at one minute. One minute, all right, just that. it's fine. Good enough. All right, perfect. And you can see that this is actually 450 degrees. Okay, yeah. um, so that's about five minutes. Okay, so we pulled the pizza dough out a tiny bit early just because we need to use the oven for the crepes. This is gonna time out perfectly. Um, it smells so good, you guys. This looks like, I mean, it is a homemade crust, but it looks like something you get at the restaurant. So we're gonna use this tapenade as our pizza sauce. So yummy. We have an olive tapenade and an artichoke tapenade as well, you guys. And so you can use those. Um, also, if you wanna do like a Mediterranean flat bread, some feta or something, that's super yummy. I could have made even more. I actually put both on sometimes. Yes. The tomato so, and the olive. Yeah, I yeah. typically do together or one side? Together. Oh, yeah, very so nice. The tomato flavor and the olive. Oh, flavor. that's a great one. It's delicious. And my kids won't eat it. If we had, <laughs> well, I won't even eat it. It doesn't like know the cheese. But the one that might eat it um, will not eat it if it has the olives on it, but he will eat it with the tomatoes. But you can see how beautiful that looks. I didn't even need the pastry brush, but... Um, if it was just the olive oil, you could use your silicone paste brush. Love this, can just throw it in the dishwasher. So that's amazing. And then, like I said, we're going to be really simple with this. Um, don't judge me. I'll tell you two reasons for being simple. One, because leftovers will only get eaten uh, by my son if it's simple. And two, because I don't know about you guys, but I am trying really hard to use the food that I have in my house and my fridge because the cost of food has gone up so much. So I'm really trying to maximize everything I use. And so I wanted to use, I had a ton of mozzarella cheese and pepperoni we always have on hand. And then I always have the top knot on hand. So this was really easy to throw together. So I, once again, wish you guys were here. I also want to highlight how yummy this roasted garlic and chive herb blend that's in there is going to taste. Okay, so then we'll just add some pepperoni on top of that. And then we'll stick that in our oven. And then we're gonna move to our next recipe, which is a super fun one, is a turkey meatloaf. And so that one, totally gluten-free as well, because I'm using gluten-free breadcrumbs. And the bread recipe that I've got to show you tonight too, you could also just use the leftovers of that, crumble that for gluten-free breadcrumbs. Okay, so. Let me go put this back in the oven right now. Do you know that crepe bag is We'll put that on the bottom. That's all right. right. Okay, perfect. Okay, so then next up is my turkey right there. You can also unmold the bread now if you want to. Oh, perfect. Is that been 10 minutes? Okay, perfect. So I'll unmold the bread first because you really do. I had um, four teas as a new flexible line for us. So those of you who already have, you have a combination of four teas and flexi pan. Um, I was just trying to learn how to use these. And I will tell you, what did I learn is that you want to pop things out 10 minutes after they've cooled. So here, this is in our twisted loaf. And this recipe is on my website, you guys. Look how gorgeous Ooh, that is. So pretty. Yes, that is gluten-free. And look how gorgeous that is. Look at that twist yeah. to that. Is that pretty or what? Okay, so that is our, oops, twisted loaf. The other thing is, is any, even if it wasn't in four teeth, anytime you have bread like this, you want to get it out of FlexiPan or four teas within 10 minutes because otherwise it'll get moist and you want it to be nice and crisp. But look how gorgeous that is as well. It's hot. <laughs> so I'm going to let it cool right there like that on that pan. Look how gorgeous that is, you guys. We did it in the log roll. So the so log, pretty. you can see the difference in the size here too. So the log mold is a little bit longer. That was Dana's idea, a little bit taller. So it really makes a nice size loaf. And then if you wanted the extra pretty loaf, do the twistable. This actually was one recipe. 
So you could put the majority of it in the log mold, but it kind of goes up really big. So if you wanted to get as big a slice of bread as you can, you can get it all in the log mold. But I learned I like to splice it like this, and this recipe freezes well. So I like to eat one, save one, or eat one, share one. Um, okay, so we're gonna leave that. And again, that recipe's on my website. I didn't show it from start to finish because I didn't have enough flour. Because for that recipe, gluten-free um, bread, you need Pillsbury, Pillsbury. It's amazing because I wouldn't use this for any other recipe other than that one. <laughs> but, okay, so now, there's another recipe I wanna show you. This one is amazing, you guys. Um, this is called turkey spinach meatloaf, okay? So first things first is we've already ground up a whole bunch of spinach in there, you can see, with our eco chop, okay? But I'm gonna show you some other things with eco chop. So we pre-chopped the spinach for you guys already, okay? So then what I'm gonna do now is chop up onion. So there's my onion before in the eco chop. You guys have never seen this, it's a great prep tool. I like to hide, chop it up enough to hide it. I don't like big chunks of onion in my meatloaf. Go ahead. No, another two minutes. My oven does not do a great job of holding it temperature. So that's what's happening there. Okay, I'm gonna grab this mini spatula that was the top knot. We're putting tomato top knot in this recipe anyways. So I love our set of two mini spatulas to pull all the last bits out of the eco chop, okay? So if you don't own this, that comes in a set of two, one, two, um, definitely consider adding that to wish list. Uh, currently we have free shipping going on, you guys. This will be a $50 or more order. You get free shipping. That's through Thursday night, okay? So don't miss that. Okay, so we put this onion in here. I forgot, um, you could add the garlic to this too, but I really wanna show you my mini herb chopper. All of these pieces I'm showing you right now to make this meatloaf are pieces that come in our meal prep collection. So you're gonna to wanna to consider that for sure. So the Eco Chop, amazing, larger food prep. Next thing I'm gonna show you is my mini herb chopper. This I love for mincing garlic. Ooh, those onions got my eyes. Okay, so I'm gonna put the blade in there and I've got four whole garlic cloves. Look at that. You're gonna put the lid on top. And then there's two ways to chop. You can twist the bottom part, like this is a rubber piece, or, and hold the top. Or you can roll it on your counter. Just gotta make sure the counter's dry. Mine's a little wet. So, so then you can roll it on the counter and dice it up even better. And then let me show you the end result. Oh, I can go more, sorry. It's hard when my counter is so wet. So I'll just do my arm workout. Go back and forth. Now I'll show you. Look how amazing that is, right? Okay, so I did garlic with that tonight, um, but you can also, I love it for shallots. I love it for green onions. I love it when I just need, you know, a tiny bit of herb blend chopped up. Like I'm gonna put cilantro on top of my barbecue chicken pizza or something, then I will use that for this, okay? So that is amazing. Next in this recipe, um, we've got breadcrumbs. So you can get panko breadcrumbs gluten-free. Like I said, you can also, now the oven it needs to go on the bottom, I think. Is it on the bottom? It's on the bottom, yeah. Yeah, the crepe, I, yeah, I'm not looking at the recipe. I was thinking the crepe normally takes five minutes, but your oven has to be really hot. And when my oven, when I put multiple things in it, it just gets difficult. So um, it'll come in a minute. That's good, I need more time. So, <laughs> so we put the uh, breadcrumbs, uh, one and a half cups. We've got two pounds of ground turkey in here, two cups of chopped spinach that we did in the eco chop, okay? One and a half cups of breadcrumb, three fourths of a cup shredded or grated Parmesan cheese, you pick. Then we're gonna do three eggs lightly beaten. So now this is our mini whisk. I love this for this exact job. So we've got three eggs in here that just need to be blended together, lightly beaten. And it's an easy job to do that. And I love that. So the last time I made this recipe, funny story, I was just dumping it in the bowl real fast. My husband was mixing it for me on this side of the um, video. You guys might've seen me go live. So I'm gonna eat the meatloaf and then had chunks of egg in it because he one didn't whisk the egg up and he also didn't um, mix the meat up enough. So, but he was helping so I couldn't complain and it was delicious still nonetheless. So, okay. So then we're gonna go ahead, already put the garlic in. 
I'm done. This is a, an easy recipe. You dump and you go. You dump and combine it. I'm going to mess it off camera because you're not going to want to get all my hands in there. We'll show you pictures later. Don't worry. Okay. This clean spatula. So now we're going to go for, oh, three teaspoons of Worcester. Is this these teaspoons or tablespoons? Tablespoons. Was it teaspoons? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's all right. I was like, I, know, I, was like, I think that's a lot, a lot of Worcester. Yeah. That's all right. My family would like it, but let's go ahead and measure that. Um, so we've all been rushing here. My sweet, sweet friends came to help me. Um, there was terrible traffic. So um, it happens and they still managed to come through for me. Okay, two tablespoons. Okay, this is another one of my favorite items. The uh, French pantry chicken or bun. So you see me shaking it just like I did the roasted garlic and chive. I make sure they blend it up really well. This is amazing. You can use it simply to season your chicken. But you can use it for so much more. We're putting it in the meatloaf tonight. It smells amazing. You can put it in eggs. Don't feel like it has to only be in chicken, you guys. Okay, so this, um, you can be pretty generous with this. The other thing I want to say about, remember I said the lid is about one tablespoon, and this calls for two tablespoons. Um, the other thing I want to say about the herb blends is they come with no salt added. They're salt-free. So you add as much or as little as you want, which I love. Uh, really good for people that are on those lower sodium diets. Okay, then we're gonna do four tablespoons of tomato tapenade. And I use a lot of this in the pizza sauce. So I know I'm just gonna put this all in here. You can't go wrong. You also need to grab the salt and pepper. Hey, you, you can grab it, or you, unless you don't want your head on camera. It do doesn't it. matter. I don't even think they can see you that much. Most everybody down here probably knows you anyways. Um, okay, perfect. Girl. So thank you. Okay, so um, tomato tapenade. And then we're gonna do uh, three tablespoons of mustard of choice. So this is our tomato herb mustard. I honestly can't tell you if this is in stock right now or not. We have a lot of great mustards, but I think the tomato herb mustard is. I thought it would go lovely with the tomato top knot. So I got that. Oh my gosh, I wish you guys could smell it. It smells so good in here. Okay, so um, yeah. We're gonna let it now, it sits for five minutes. And then, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, five minutes, perfect. Okay, so we've got um, so we got all those yummy ingredients and then we're going to salt and pepper. So I want to show you, we have our David Grind salt grinder and our Pep Rally pepper mill, which is awesome. The top part is the grinder. And then these are your salt and peppers of choice. Um, we have to have curry coconut on there. My husband must've been using that for grilling. Um, I'm going to use our, I'm going to use our basil Parmesan in this one. That sounds good. So you can see, I just changed the black lid. Now this salt can be stored, and then I can put this on as my grinder, and I can grind that in and flavor as I see fit. And so about one teaspoon to your liking, and then you can do the same thing with the pepper. You can select your pepper of choice. We're going to use which one's on here. Anyone that knows me knows it's going to be the Telegin. <laughs> That's my favorite. Um, so I got my pepper in there. Okay, so now we're not gonna do this on camera. We're doing it off camera, but we're gonna mix this all together with our hands. It gets really nice and combined and then put it in our six loaf tray. This is awesome. So then what ends up happening with this, you guys, is I get six meat loaves. So we're gonna serve what we serve tonight and the others are gonna get frozen for a meal later, which is awesome. So super easy to do that. And um, with freezing, it's great because I'll just freeze it in this tray. Once it's frozen, pop it out. Because it's flexible, you can do that with any of our items, which I just love. So, and all of our mustards are currently in stock. Oh, you're awesome. Thank you, Tina. I appreciate you looking that up. Okay, you guys. So, oh, I'm watching the time here. Should I show you this? Yes. 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 I told you that was in there. Thank you. Go over. It's good. Ready? Yeah, I think it's ready. Okay, perfect. So we got to show you this pizza, and I'm going to show you. These might be out of stock, but they were low stock. Um, if, if they're not, get them now before they're gone. So the signature spatula, last I checked, was low inventory. Yep, yep, yep. This guy's amazing because it's thin and flexible, goes underneath. And so you can see that gorgeous browning on the gluten free pizza crust. That's gorgeous. I think that. I do want to go a tiny bit longer because the sauce. Yeah. So let's okay. go. Five more minutes. Okay. But you can see you guys it's getting nice. Okay. All right. Uh Dana, can you grab me 
Is it out already? Okay, if you have it, be glad. And hopefully we'll get back. a medium bond map. That would be awesome. <laughs> um, sorry, we're getting into work here. So these are our crepes, and based on time, I might not show you this recipe from start to finish, but it is on my website. The one thing I'm gonna tell you, it looks like it worked without um sorry, do, where are they? Sorry, rolled up to the left. Um, and so I can just use this large one. Never mind. I use the large one, it's fine. Sorry, sorry. Okay, so I just want to show you guys because you have to flip this out. And this is how you get it out. So a medium works, but we're gonna use a large. So this is, um, we're gonna hope this works. <laughs> Cause I've made these like 10 times and it works every time. This is super hot. So I'm gonna use this hot pad to kind of flip it over. Okay. And then, there. Okay, here we go. Roll, roll, please. Okay, we pop the corners. In your direction so you can see. Watch this crazy. Oh, oh my God. God. Beautiful. Is this crazy or what, you oh, guys? Wow. Ooh, that's crazy. Sorry. Just right there you go. Wow. There's my crepe. Oh, we're there's my dirty pan. Easy peasy. <laughs> so we can make more. You can also do it in the flexi mat with the lower edge if you would like. Totally up to you. Um, this recipe will make two rectangles and one square. Okay. So uh, it's warm right now. So I'm going to let it kind of cool. But like, look at this, you guys. So you could do, um, my was little, my mom made, maybe your mom's too, used to make some amazing Italian crepes and she would fill them with like a ricotta filling. It was almost like a lasagna, but with a crepe. And so she would roll them. And uh, so you could do a traditional crepe like that, cut this in half and have that rolled up. But we're making these into fun little dessert crepes. And so I've already made the whipped cream. Uh, our CEO, it's her recipe. And she calls this um, Chantilly cream. I don't know if one of you want to tell me if that's just a fancy word for homemade whipped cream, but that's what I do. I, but it's a good um, portion recipe. And I'm realizing I, no, I did put powdered sugar in it. It's one cup of milk to one tablespoon of powdered sugar and one teaspoon of vanilla. You whip it up in your mixer and then we're going to top it with this. Now this, the way that I want to do this, uh, Dana, could you grab um, a platter from the middle yeah. down there. Is okay. it a is it milk or whipping cream? Whipping cream. Did yeah. I say milk? You said milk. Sorry. Sorry. Whipping cream. Yeah, that's why I need help here. <laughs> um, that works perfect. Yeah. So I do this job. I have another full time job, <laughs> and I'm a mom to three teenage boys. So my brain is like all over the place. <laughs> so um, so what we're gonna do with these? So you could totally do these with uh, fruit of choice, fresh cream in your crepes. You could do savory crepes, sweet crepes, you name it. But with these, we're going to use our French pancake jams because they are amazing. And I will tell you myself, like just putting the jam with the crepe, mm, 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 so good. But I'm going to use fresh whipped cream with them too. So what we're going to do is you're going to take your scissors or your cake server knife you pick. But this is going to make eight crepes. So I cut it lengthwise. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to do quarter. Doesn't have to be perfect. Unless the kids are comparing the size of their crates. <laughs> um, and then I cut the quarters into little fractals. So eight from one. And like I said, remember it makes two and a half. So you're really getting like 20 crepes um, this size. Oh, wow. It's a perfect nice. size for dessert. And then can you even believe that these are gluten free? I mean, truly mm -hmm. amazing. And these are my kids didn't even know they're gluten free. It's not funny. Okay. So then um, we've got, I, I have four jams because we have a nut allergy. Um, we can do almonds, but we don't do the mandarin spice. The mandarin spice jam is incredible, uh, but it has um, nuts in it, hazelnuts, or I think it has cashews or something. But we've got uh, four, we got this raspberry violet, and we have strawberry champagne. Did I cut those in half? One, two, three. No, I didn't. Sorry, no. sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, they're just not exactly the same size. Strawberry champagne, raspberry violet, Provence apricot, or apricot almond. So I'm just gonna put some jam in here. Uh, about a teaspoon of jam. You can use more or less, whatever. You're gonna roll it up. And then we're gonna use our fresh whipped cream. I have this pastry bag stand and our pastry bag. So simple, you guys. So it's two pieces. So that goes in there. And then the tip, you take the tip and it just sits right in there. So star tip. Okay. And then I'm going to put this in the stand. And the beauty of that is 
Now I have two hands to fill my pastry bag. Okay. So we have a lot of spatulas. Oh, I'm so lucky. <laughs> this is our heat resistant spatula. Use it making candies because it's not going to melt in your caramel or your toffee or your peanut brittle. I'm using it to scoop my whipped cream tonight. But and all of our amazing jams are in stock too. Yes, I love it. <laughs> you guys, the jams are incredible. They're great hostess. Skills. You got somebody, maybe somebody who um, either loves, um, I'm just going to put like something. I always overdo it, but sorry. <laughs> uh, you had somebody who either doesn't drink or they have all the wine they know what to do with, then, and you want to take them something to their house, then you guys can do a take um, our oils, vinegar. I said, I totally overdid that. That's right. <laughs> looks so um, cool. And then you can do, take a jam instead. And because that's a really nice gift. Who doesn't love a little jam for their toast um, in the morning or for their dessert treats, you can see. And like I said, you can just do these um, without the whipped cream if you want, but I'm just gonna put a little bit less in this one <laughs> um, so that it rolls up nicely. And then this is really fun. Once you get them on the platter, then you can decorate them too. So, okay. So I know I said that I was going to show you this recipe, but I'm not because we're running out of time. And I promise this was going to be 45 minutes. And I have some people coming over tonight to taste this, some of my team members. And so we're going to do that. This is going to be a long ways the other way. Um, but I do want to show you um, one more thing I've got. If you are somebody, like you saw how easy this is to make, these crepes, and then you're going to see, I'm going to decorate them, little little dollops on the end to make them look even prettier. My whipped cream is getting warm, and it was in the fridge, but I'm telling you, this house yeah. is hot, and I have the AC on. Okay, so let me show you how pretty these look. These are going to be so amazing cute. to serve brunch, dessert, you name it, gluten-free crepes. And really, the batter is literally put everything in and it whisk it. So, easy. so simple. So simple batter is. Oh, and then we have this amazing gluten-free pizza. No one's gonna know gosh, it's gluten-free. Let's look at that bottom. I'll give you a little help. Look at that. Good. Oh, oh my gosh, gosh. nice beautiful. and brown. Thank you, Tina. Great. Okay, now the other thing I wanna show you is that if you are the person who just is like, you know what? I do not bake gluten-free. I don't know. Um, I don't wanna deal with finding gluten-free flowers. This is my new favorite find of the year. This is called Go Nana's. And no, I don't work for them. <laughs> um, but the you can buy these on Amazon. I found them. The best price I found is at our local Safeway. So if you have Safeway, um, check that out. But then three different brands. And it's really cool because I love it because it's gluten-free. It's nut-free. Um, you can make it dairy-free. Um, it's vegan. And it is the only sugar you use in it is one tablespoon of maple syrup. So to the max, I added three medium bananas. I added one tablespoon of maple syrup. Um, two tablespoons milk, you can use dairy milk, free milk, regular milk, you name it. And then two tablespoons of melted, whatever oil you want. I haven't used avocado oil, you can use coconut oil, what well, you name it. But I also want to highlight our flour tray because this tray is on sale this month with a large bond mat. And I want to show you how pretty that comes out. So, so that's pretty, banana bread. Pretty. So, so these are just beautiful, beautiful, um, great tray. Consider this is one of our March specials. And right now, whether you're getting a special or you're getting something full price, everything $50 and higher. So you can get, you know, multiple French pantry items to add up to $50. You can get collections that are over $50, you name it, but uh, everything $50 and higher, free shipping automatically. You don't even have to put a code in. And then if you want the shopping link for this class, if you're interested in placing an order, let me know. Because when you place an order under a class, you can also get an additional item at 20% off for being in that class once you spend $100. So really great ways to bundle and save. So if you're interested in getting any of these products, let me know, now's the time to do it. Don't worry, the free shipping is good through Thursday night at 11.59 p.m. my time, Pacific time. So you got a few days to shop, reach out if you have any questions, need some help. But I really hope that this uh, gluten-free class taught you that there's a lot of great things you can cook gluten-free. Um, no one will know it's gluten-free. It makes uh, everyone feel really comfortable uh, whether they're gluten-free or not, and super tasty food. So uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks, everyone, for being on. Are there any questions in the chat box? It says, them? Go Nanas. What is that pre-mix called? Oh, it's called Go Nanas, like N-A-N-A-S. And this one is a chocolate chip banana bread mix. They have an original banana bread, and then they have, like, a chocolate brownie one. It's really good.
Oh, hi everyone. Hi everyone. Everyone just says hi and everything <laughs> looks good. <laughs> yay, yay. Okay. Well, thank you everyone. I'm going to sign off now. Um, click on meet love together. I'll be posting pictures on my web on my Facebook with that and my website. The recipes are already there. All these recipes are already on my website. If you can't find them, reach out. Let me know. Okay. Thanks everyone. Have a good night.